of you know me, but for those of you who don't, my name is Lia Ekoka, and now I'm the new appointed Chief Executive Officer of Chrysler Corporation. I've spent all my professional years at Ford, and last eight years since 1970 as President of Ford Motor Company. But the ways of me and Mr. Henry Ford split, and now I'll be leading Chrysler Corporation. I've got two news for you, the good one and the bad one. The bad news is that we are virtually at the verge of bankruptcy. Our last quarter we had a loss of $160 million, the worst in our history. Our sales plummet, and we don't have enough operational cash. The good news is, however, that from now on, things can only get better. And we either heal as a team, or we are going to crumble, inch by inch, play by play, till we finish. We're in hell right now, believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, and we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. As some of you know, my family comes from Italy, once a Roman Empire. But before the Roman Republic became an empire, it had to face many challenges, and some of its challenges almost bring its destruction. In 218 BC, Carthaginian general Hannibal Barca invaded Rome. He crossed out and beat every Roman army she sent against him. He beat Romans at Lake Tratamine, at the River Trebia, and the wars came at Cana, where he virtually annihilated the Roman army of 80,000 men. On one day, almost all of these 80,000 men were slaughtered. On one day, Rome lost more soldiers than the United States in the entire Vietnam War. After these three great victories, Hannibal sent envoy to the Roman Senate, but they refused to negotiate. They just did not accept that they were beaten. And this new state of mind, epitomized by a new leader, their new general Scipio, emerged. And this state of mind would fuel Roman desperation and determination to survive. First, Rome needed to rebuild its army, and desperate time calls for desperate measures. All rules of who could join well, the army were relaxed. Boys were enlisted. Slaves were promised freedom. Criminals and debtors were promised amnesty if they joined. War tax was doubled, and no one complained. And it was not just the aristocratic leaders who wanted to keep going, keep on fighting, and not surrendering, but also all the common citizens. They also believe that it's their duty to the country, that, that, that they also have a stake in what is going on. And Rome finally prevailed. They conquered Hannibal, Hannibal they beat him, and they finally crushed his homeland Carthage. Ladies and gentlemen, now there's a Hannibal at our gate. We are losing money. Our internal affairs are a mess. <coughs> Oil price doubled, and imported cars from Japan, who are fuel efficient, are taking down our sales, which is particularly bad for us, because we are leader in gas guzzling cars that use a lot of fuel. So it's even worse for us than other American companies. What's more? Two of models we recently put on market were also a total mess. There are almost they're they're going so often to mechanics like a drag special and person goes to toilet or even more often. <laughs> but we cannot surrender. I believe that Kaiser has respectable past, but I also believe that it has a future. We have strong and good developed dealerships and the best engineers. 
So we can together turn this company around. And that's what we are going to do. I've got three point plan, a roadmap on our way to redemption from the point where we are now. First, the loss of every company is cash, so we need it. We need to get cash. Next week I'm going to Washington DC. I will be speaking before Congress and we are going to apply for loan guarantee. I believe that government will grant us a loan. So They will give us that cash. I believe I will give them offer they can receive. I will simply tell them, guys, you can either give us this loan, 1.2 billion dollars now, and you have a chance that you all give it, that we will give it back to you, or we are going get, we are going down, and you will have to pay twice as more, 2.7 million in unemployment benefits just for the first year. Second thing, I already prepared a printout for every congressman which has list of the dealers and our suppliers cooperating with us in his town, in his district. So he knows what would be the consequences for the people who vote for him if we are going down. What's more, I also found out that 1971 Congress already granted a loan for Lockheed Martin and also give credit for electric companies, railroad companies and farmers. Second, when we finally have this money, that's the first step. We need to, we have to make most of it. So it means cutting costs. That's the time calls for that measure. There will be massive layoffs, cuts in salaries, and we're gonna close plan. I will start with myself. For the next year, my salary is one US dollar. All the salaries of management would be cut, except the secretaries who I believe they deserve every cent they get. As far as blue collar workers are concerned, I have to say it with a very heavy heart. I know you are decent people working hard to feed your family so your children can go to college. I understand it, my father was a worker. But I have to say, I have thousands of jobs set for $17 an hour and known for 20. There will be no strike, no negotiation. It's a clear cut deal. You are just take it or not, and we are all going down and you hit the brick. <coughs> That's it. When we are efficient, we have an operating cash, we can find strike back and start bringing profits again. Remember that night is always darkest just before the dawn. And when the 
the sun finally shines for us and we are back in our feet, there will be time for payback. Then there will be bonuses, raises, promotions. I can promise you that. So now, let's throw up, please, back to work, and let's show the world what we made of.